At the start of the movie, a group of kids venture into a forbidden cave to conduct research. Ten minutes later, they notice something horrifying, so one of the girls decides to get out and call for help. Surprisingly, when she reaches the top, she finds out that Earth has completely changed. There are massive rock formations, sandstorms are wreaking havoc everywhere, and even a spaceship is seen in the vicinity. This implies that somehow, over 1,000 years have passed outside the cave while they've been inside. The movie then flashes back to how it all started. Archaeology professor Hopper, along with his dog Boss, are searching nearby the isolated system of caves. They come across a van which apparently belonged to the 70s. It turns out Hopper is searching for a group of hippies that went missing decades ago, and the minivan belonged to them. They're probably out eating sandwiches and hunting ghosts. As the search continues, Boss starts barking as if he has sensed something and wants to go home immediately. However, disregarding his wishes, Hopper enters one of the caves and discovers a strange cowboy frozen in time. Time. The man appears to be from a different era, which is evident from his clothing and gun. Taken aback, Hopper gets back in his car and drives back home. There, he is greeted by his two students, Taylor and Jackie, who are excited to start their new exploration trip. But to their dismay, Hopper tells them that the plan has changed, so he will be going alone now. Shortly after, he gathers all the necessary items and gets back to the cave. There, he discovers a strange layer that separates the atmosphere between the outside world and the cave. Although skeptical, Hopper enters the lair, and as soon as he does so, the frozen man starts moving. In the next scene, it has been two days since the students heard from their professor, so they decide to look for him. But since they don't own a vehicle, Taylor is forced to ask for help from a girl named Kara, who has a massive crush on him. Kara immediately agrees to bring her dad's jeep, but only if she and her little sister, Veeves, are also allowed to join in. To make matters worse, the archaeology students are compelled to take another kid, Furby, with them. <laughs> Furby? As he and Veeves are apparently shooting for their school project. After a while, the group arrives at the spot and discovers the abandoned minivan from before. On checking, they learn that the hippies the professor was looking for are none other than his parents. They ventured into the system of caves some decades back in search of the Fountain of Youth, but never returned. Then they discover a worn-out rope that leads them to a different part of the cave. Jackie follows the rope through a slender tunnel and finds out that it has been cut off. She also notices that the cave goes very deep, and it is possibly where the professor has been lost. Taylor asserts that the rope is too old to belong to Professor Hopper, but he nonetheless decides to get down and inspect the cave. The girls also decide to join him, while Furby is ordered to keep watch, as he is too scared of the dark. Come on, Furby, grow a pair. While climbing down the massive cave, Kara comes across the same strange barrier and informs Taylor that the temperature is different on either side of it. Despite this, they carry on with their descent until they finally reach the base of the cave. Following this, the movie cuts back to two days ago, when Professor Hopper has just entered the barrier. As he is slowly making his way through the cave, suddenly, he hears a scream from inside, followed by a terrifying howl. Alarmed, Hopper starts running back and reaches the entrance where he notices the sunlight flickering in a strange manner. When he finally gets outside, it's already nighttime, despite him having been in the cave for merely two minutes. He then hurries to his truck but finds that it has been covered by overgrown plants. In fact, the whole area, which was once a desert, has been covered by dense forest, implying that decades have passed since Hopper entered the mysterious cave. Shortly after, he comes across Kara's dilapidated jeep and Taylor's backpack, so he decides to get back into the cave to look for them. Back in the present, the group explores the cave until they hear the same terrifying howl that Hopper heard earlier. Scared that something is lurking in the dark, they decide to abandon their mission and head home. Jackie goes first, and as she is climbing, the rope is suddenly cut, causing her to fall from a decent height. As a result, she fractures her leg, while Taylor, who is trying to save her, breaks his arm. Then, Taylor tries to check on the second rope, but surprise it has been cut as well. With this, they deduce that Furby has been messing around with them. An angry Taylor tries calling him from the radio, but the boy doesn't reply. By this time, the group has started panicking, and as they are brainstorming ideas to get out of the cave, a loud thud is heard in the background. It appears as if something fell from above. Scared, Taylor again tries to make contact via the radio, and this time, a muffled voice replies, Help me. Taylor asks about the man's identity, and to everyone's horror, it turns out to be Furby. When I was a kid, Furby scared the shit out of me, too. Left with no options, the group decides to venture further into the tunnel until they come across a place where the sky is visible. Surprisingly, just like Hopper had witnessed earlier, the sun keeps flickering continuously, as if day is turning into night in the fraction of a second. But despite this, the genius Taylor believes that Furby is playing another prank on them with his flashlight. Oh, okay, Taylor, sure, buddy. However, to their horror, when they continue inspecting the place, they find Furby lying dead on the side. 
side. His neck has been broken, and some nasty marks are visible on his face. The sight devastates the group, and they start fearing that someone is after them. When Taylor finds Furby's cut-off rope, they become sure of it. Fortunately, the group finds the little boy's GoPro still in working condition and decides to check what caused his demise. In the video, Furby is waiting for the group to return for days, but to no avail. He tries everything, calling them through the radio, screaming through every hole in the cave, and even throwing rocks for a hint, but never gets any response. When he gets bored, he wanders through the nearby area and comes across the hippie's minivan from the 70s, which has a journal inside of it. The journal mentions that the mysterious cave contains a fountain of youth, which can miraculously heal people or even bring the dead back to life. And this is the reason why Hopper's parents went into the cave, as his mom was suffering from a rare form of cancer. A few more days pass by and Furby has exhausted all his food and water supply. Assuming that his friends are dead, he decides to leave the place, but for that, he needs the Jeep keys from Taylor. Hence, he decides to climb down into the cave and retrieve them himself. But when he crosses the mysterious barrier, he notices the sky changing rapidly. Before he can make sense of the phenomenon, the rope snaps automatically, resulting in a deadly fall. This is the thud the group heard earlier. Once inside the cave, the radio starts working, so an injured Furby tries calling out for help. But unfortunately, this only draws the attention of some man-eaters, who arrive there and kill him mercilessly. The footage leaves the group in a state of shock, confusion, and sadness. They're perplexed as to how Furby spent days outside, while it has only been 30 minutes for them inside the cave. Now the group is desperate to get out of the place. Since Kara is the only one who is fit and not injured, she is tasked with free climbing her way out of the massive cave. Before leaving, Taylor hands her a beacon so that she can alert the authorities as soon as she gets a signal. After a bit of a struggle, Kara finally gets out of the cave, but what she notices leaves her dumbfounded. The area, which was once covered with dense green forest, has turned into an uninhabitable barren land, with sandstorms brewing in the distance. The oxygen supply is also very low, because of which Kara keeps on coughing. Scared, she climbs up to a rock and tries to get a signal on the beacon. As expected, Kara does not get any signal, but she notices a strange spaceship-like object floating in the distance, indicating that the time has moved on by several millennia. When she gets back into the cave, Taylor and the others are upset that she didn't even try. It turns out that while Kara was outside for a whole 30 minutes, only a few seconds have passed for the group inside the cave. Enraged that her efforts are not being appreciated, Kara shows her camera, which verifies her claim that she did in fact go outside. In the video, the strange deserted world and the massive sandstorms are all visible. Finally, Taylor deduces that, for some reason, the time inside the cave is slowed down, and every time the sun flickers, it means that one day has passed. Finally, about time these noobs figured that out. He adds that this is the reason why the ropes were being cut off, as the friction over the years made them fragile. Oh, I hadn't figured that out. Hearing all this, Veeves decides to rewatch Furby's footage once again, and when she does, she discovers something shocking. In one of the frames, the sky is changing its color, with the dark sky being the winter and the light one summer. This concludes that every second inside the cave is not a day outside, but in fact, an entire year. The revelation terrifies the group, and they become even more desperate to escape. Once Kara gains her energy back, she again attempts to get out of the cave, but just then, a futuristic looking ladder is thrown in out of nowhere. Then, a giant alien-like figure starts climbing down, prompting everyone to back off. When the alien reaches the cave, suddenly, a barbaric man-eater attacks him. A fight ensues between the two, but the giant alien easily subdues and ties up the man-eater with a high-end electronic device. Then he starts going after the group, causing them to flee in terror. After a while, Taylor and the gang arrive at a mysterious place where a group of man-eaters are devouring their recent victim. It appears to be the same cowboy from the start of the movie. Unfortunately, the man-eaters notice the humans and begin chasing after them. In order to buy others time to flee, Taylor makes the ultimate sacrifice and fights the beasts alone. Sadly, he is of no match, and the man-eaters brutally finish him off. Once they leave the place to chase after the others, Kara sneaks inside and is devastated to see Taylor laying dead. As she weeps in despair, the giant alien approaches the two and drags Taylor to a small pool of water, which appears to be the Fountain of Youth. Lo and behold, he comes back to life, and the myth which was always laughed at by others turns out to be real. But before the group can rejoice, the man-eaters return and start attacking the giant. This time, they outnumber him and even manage to take his helmet off, which leaves the giant gasping for air. Luckily, before he can be finished off, Kara and Taylor help him out and eventually trap the man-eaters with his equipment. After the altercation, the couple tries to help the giant up to his feet, but they fail. It appears as if the oxygen inside the Earth's atmosphere is poisonous for him, causing his internal organs to fail. At the same time, Veeves and Jackie also arrive there and notice the devastation lying around. Before dying, the giant displays a news report about the group's 
disappearance from several millennia ago. He also shows the many other clips which indicate that the living conditions on Earth have become uninhabitable. So, the humans have left for another planet. A special spaceship called the Ark is responsible for transporting the humans, and it is the same object that Kara had seen earlier. After providing all this information, the giant passes away. In the next scene, as Taylor searches the cave for more clues, he suddenly comes across Professor Hopper lying injured on the floor, but what he sees next shocks him to the core. In front of him are several other layers of time, which move at even slower rates. In the first layer, Hopper's parents are frozen, while in deeper layers, several prehistoric men are fighting one another to seize the fountain of youth. Hopper then explains that the whole system of caves is designed to keep humans out and other organisms from using the fountain of youth. Taylor tries to escort him back to safety, but Hopper insists on staying there. Shortly after, Taylor returns back to his group and puts the dead Furby into the fountain of youth. Jackie also heals her injured leg there, but just as they are about to leave, the barbarians again surround them. With nowhere to go, the group decides to use the high-tech ladder from the alien. Kara goes first, but when she reaches the top, she finds out that the entrance has been filled with water. Suddenly, a creature yanks her up, much to the horror of the remaining group. Now, Taylor and the others are in a perilous situation. If they go up, the creatures will kill them, but if they back down, the barbarians will eat them. A few seconds later, a fully transformed Kara returns to the cave and pulls everyone with a high-tech rope. A while later, she also pulls Furby, Professor Hopper, and his parents. It turns out that the creatures that pulled Kara earlier are actually human beings that evolved with the change of time. And despite Kara having been gone for mere seconds in the cave, she in fact lived several years outside. In the final scene, the group is brought to the Ark, which is on its course to look for a new planet to live in. The Ark is being controlled by evolved creatures who speak a completely different language. The movie ends as the spaceship blasts into space, leaving the blue planet behind forever. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.